left your bit. See, that just fucks my whole thing. <laughs> Why did you do that? What? Yeah. Are you even in the frame? Listen, I have to do this early because I'm going to Utah this morning. Um, we have the Ken Block Day, 4-3, April 3rd, uh, is coming up at Woodward Park City, and I'm going to Salt Lake today because I want to go snowboarding for the next two days, and look. Oh! Look, look at the, well, the phone is like doing shit on its own at this point. Well, that's your fault. Ah, I blame Obama, really. Um, the bomber? So, yeah, so I'm going to Woodward today. Check, check. I'm going to ride check, check. Woody's tomorrow, because it looks like it's going to be like 50 degrees in Woody's. Awesome. What the fuck? You know, I'm really, I'm really sick. People love, it's okay, people love this. People do mm. love this. I'm going to, should I start the podcast? Just start the fucking podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the Monday Mass. I know. I know what you're thinking. Is this the world's greatest action sports podcast? Well, it's one of them. And a disclaimer. It's one of the best. Disclaimer today. Yeah, we're early, huh? We're early, and it's also April 1st, which means it's open season to lie on this podcast. All, the, every subject is, you You find the lies. You find the truths. Find, find the truths. I like your glasses, Todd. Oh, these? Wow. Oh, these are spy. Oh, look. These are spy optics. Well, I brought my sunglasses in, too. These are actually prescription. Yeah, these look are, at the, Look at the coverage here. What's up? Hey, what's up? Does it look cooler? Well, you? let's just go ahead and start. This podcast is presented by Spy Optics. See, Todd and I both have our spy sunglasses on, those happy lenses, and we're fully sponsored, and it's so great. It's like, I mean, for me, as a guy who wears glasses 24 hours a day... It's a great sponsor to have. Uh, it's March 25th, 2024. And guess what, Todd? We've got a brand new sponsor, and it's just in time for spring break Did and you say, summer. Did you say that because you're trying to be funny? No, this is not an April Fool's joke. It's Let actually, me reiterate. This is March not 25th. an April Fool's... Oh, <laughs> hey. It's April 1st. Look at it. I'm working... So... Here, here's let me just let, let, let you guys in on a little secret here. Here's what happens. Monday morning, Todd and I wake up bright and early, usually around 6:30. We text each other, and it's the same text every Monday. Podcast at noon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, depending on the week, I'm either getting the kids out the door to school, or I am walking the dog or whatever. And then I come to the office, compile bullet pointed news items about surfing, skating, and snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Todd. Uh, he sleeps until about 11. No, I don't. Uh, then he That's a just God, casually God damn lie. wakes up, showers in jean shorts, because he's a, a never nude. And then he just kind of strolls in here and starts talking shit. Isn't that... That's... God, if it was only like that. Right? It's like that. But have, anyway, it's any, April 1st. Do you have any... Um, Sunblock? No, I'm gonna hit hit up the. Here, I got some left. Right I'm gonna hit up the internet too. Yeah, I, guess, I ate some. I ate like some super salty. Let me see your eyes. Super salty. Oh, jeez. Super salty food last night, and I've got like psycho bags in my eyes this morning. Did you sleep? I slept, but you know, like sometimes like super salty foods. But for me, yeah, just gives me bags under my eyes. So what about if you put um you Cucumbers? put pro no um preparation H. I know face? you have preparation H on, on your hands. On your face? Yeah, you put preparation H under your bags like that, and because uh, that's technically, I think that's what it does to the hemorrhoids and the sphincter butthole region. Then why don't it tightens people, it up. Then why don't people use preparation H on like um, if your knee is swollen? We've got a new sponsor, folks, and this is exciting. Not yet. No, Not yet. I'm just going to reveal. We got a new sponsor. This is very exciting. So we are now presented by Sunbum. No one can see that. This is great. And, yeah, not, and, and hey, it's about time. You know, it's... Sunbum. We've been... We've been... Uh, this, is, this is great because this is actually something Todd and I use and love. Like all of our sponsors, we use and love all the products, but... What is that? This is very important because... Is that deodorant? I mean, they have so many products. They have a lot this of is what you're going to be wanting to use for surfing. That is the this is the 50, the Julian Wilson face stick, is it, and is it I love this stuff. stuff? Uh, it's got a little tint to it. Yeah. Perfect Todd, Todd tint match right there. Um, so basically, we have a ton of 
sunblocks and whatnot. We've got all kinds of stuff from our friends at Sunbone. They're going to be with us for a long time to come because this is what we do. We're in the sun all the time. Look, we got we got sunbum towel. We got all this stuff, and I'm gonna have to just keep a lot of this stuff in my van. So if you see me and you need sunblock, I will personally rub it in for you. Thank you, sunbum. Um, hey. Very stoked to have you guys with us. Um, we're gonna reiterate. Chris ke is keeping it in his van. Yeah. So come in my van, and I will rub sunblock on you any day, any day, anytime. Um, you gotta be 18 and over though. So that's uh. Sunbump at Sunbump. So much more to come from our new partners, Sunbump. Uh, we talked about Spy, Opus Footwear at Opus Footwear. We've got some beautiful models right behind us for skateboarders, by skateboarders. I just dropped a video on Friday back on my Adult Swim bullshit, but guess what? Skated in these. Whoo! Todd, these are good skate shoes right here. You like them? They're just simple. I like, I like the ones that don't have laces. I can't be bothered right with laces anymore. That's Todd's go-to. Those are just the slip-ons. Anyway, Opus Footwear, at Opus Footwear. Hit me up. You got a code for that. Mammoth Mountain. Just packed up my kids' snow gear. Uh, and a lot of people that I've talked to, Todd, are going to be spending their spring break at Mammoth. They just got a ton of snow. You've got time to get in your car and get up to Mammoth. It takes about five hours to get there. And it's a scenic drive. You can cruise the whole way and have a good time. And you will be riding POW uh, ASAP because Mammoth is wide open. Have you heard any reports from our friends and family at Mammoth? It just, just snowed again. It just snowed again at um, Mammoth Mountain. Check the reports. And like our ad block is usually right around five hours long. So then by the time you're pulling into Bishop, we're just finishing up the ad block. Perfect. Perfect. A lot of people, you know what? I feel like the Monday Mass is the go-to podcast for people driving to Mammoth. It's one of the best it's ad blocks awesome. that also features light podcasting that anyone has. It's an ad block about nothing. <laughs> Hanson Surfboards at Hanson Surfboards just had a big old sale. And I want to thank the Hanson Surf, the, the rental shop in Hanson Surfboards for hooking it up, hook the boys up. Because basically, you don't do you like do you recommend buying stuff for no. kids or renting no. stuff for kids? Yeah, well, there's like both, there's, a little mix, kind of a little bit of, but what well, depends? If you don't go that much, there's really no reason, and there are like a bunch of different. Like Hanson's is great; you can go there and rent through um, through the rental program they have there, which is awesome. But if you don't happen to live, and this is just this isn't a In general. this isn't a sponsor plug, but it's actually something kind is this of like. Cool. A, are you gonna? How about you? Anti-sponsor us? No. Can get us canceled by no, no, sponsor? No, no, no. There's just no, like, no, no, no. like, if you go places, there's this, we, and during the, um, what are you doing? Just go. You keep during the uh, natural selection, we were kind of hyping up this uh, get, uh, get Sendy or Sendy. Get Rich or Die uh, Trying. It's like a Sendy. It's on, it's an app, and it's kind of like a gear swap or rental thing. Is it incendiary? It's actually pretty cool. I like that idea because, you know, with kids... And the amount of money it costs to buy them, you know, snowboarding is not cheap, so why not save a couple dollars on your gear that they're going to ride? And they're really going to take two runs. Well, I... You're, you're a lot like a kid. I want to recommend people go to Hanson's now, because all the gear is on sale. And they had a big sale of the weekend. I'm sure there's a ton of items left. You, right. go to the web, you can go to the website as well. Hanson Surfboards, at Hanson Surfboards. Todd, you got Machu Picchu energy over here? I do. I need that. What do you need? It. Why do you like it? Because it gets... Sell it to the... I'm going to. This, they mean... sponsor us, and then we sell it God, to the people. such a jerk. It's... A You're great... a jerk. I have been trying to cut down on sugar. Um, April Fool's. <laughs> he but uh, the best part about it is, you know, there's no sugar, and it doesn't, you know... I don't know. I don't get like I don't get as gnarly of a crash with this. If I right. if I drink one of these midday for my midday pick me up after my thirteen coffees in the morning, it actually works. It works, huh? It does work. I had a Machu Picchu right before my Bruce Springsteen concert. And the crazy thing is, is we get a bunch of Machu Picchu and it's always gone. Well, we like, it always is gone. Like at my house, it's gone. Like my kids take it all. Right. Yeah. So. Well. There's that. We need more. Kids love much. We love it. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, yeah. The Dana Point Surf Film Festival is coming at Dana Point Film Festival. Uh, Endless Summer and Dana Point Film Festival together. This is the annual Ocean Film Festival held from May 2nd to May 5th. And this just in, 
Friday night at the Dana Point Film Festival uh, uh, at the Salt Creek location is Volcom Night. So we're going to show Volcom movies. I'm going to be hosting. My band Sunbender is playing. I'm sure Volcom peeps will be there to give you a bunch of free Volcom stuff. It's going to be awesome. You know the hill at Salt Creek? Mm -hmm. So the stage and screen is at the bottom of the hill. Everybody comes out, lawn chairs, blankets. Oh. It's just an overall awesome time. Uh, at Dana Point Film Fest, with Vol, <laughs> at Dana Point Film Festival on the gram. Get your tickets now. It's going to be super fun. There's tons of different locations and rad stuff at the Dana Point Women's Club, uh, Station Craft Brewery, Dana Point Sailing Center, Salt Creek Beach, etc. That is the Dana Point Film Festival. Friday All right, night, and now we get into the podcast. Oh, or is no, there... I got some Cote dates. Yeah. Well, what do you have to promote? I'll let you promote something. I don't have anything to promote. Pin Block Day. Yes. Is there a, web, a webcast for that? How can um, people get I involved believe, if they're not in Park City? I believe there is a webcast. It's 4-3-2024. The 4-3-2024 is uh, the 4-3-I Institute. It's uh, Ken Block's legacy uh, charity that he has, and it's going to be a really good time. Like I said, Todd's hosting. I am co-hosting. We're hosting at night because there's an actual like a, a live auction with crazy stuff up for auction. And wow. Um, there's going to be, it's going to be a great time. If you're in and around Salt Lake, there's a lot of people going. There are some insane musical acts that are happening there. Like surprise acts? Surprise musical acts. <gasps> uh, lots of, lots of who's who's. And that day, during the day at Woodward Park City, is really cool because you can go there and we're going to do this Mountain Lab throwback with me and Grenier and Eddie Wall and it's dude, the weather's supposed to be so beautiful. insane. Bluebird. Yeah, yeah, like in like in the 50s both uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then do okay. I need to bring a snowboard? Are you not bringing a snowboard? No, well, actually, you know what? Don't. I'm actually not getting there until like mid morning. Yeah, don't. Just don't. So I bring boots? No. And borrow a board? No. No? No. So just bring a snow skate. Or get, you can borrow a bar of snow skate then. Let me go to Hanson's and buy some. Uh, that's buy. it, but we're going we're gonna to have more. Okay, so I have a solo set coming up at the Together San Diego Flood Relief Benefit Show at Garage Collective on April 6th with the Slashes, Dead Feather Moon, and Be Real. You can go to at Together San Diego on Instagram. It's going to be a super cool and fun event for a great cause, helping relieve fellow San Diegans with their flood uh, damage and whatnot, getting them back in their houses. I'm also DJing an all vinyl set at Soda Bar. With the Paranoids and Croker, that's on Crocus something. What is that? April. What day is it? Croker? Is it April 1st? Did you say Croker? Croker. Not Crocus. April 4th, I'm DJing at Soda Bar. Sunbender is playing April 10th. Dude, I'm on tour in Jesus San Diego. Jesus Christ. Is there anything that you're not going to promote right now? Sunbender is playing April, 11, uh, April 10th with Vito in the Trees Infinity Eyes at Casbah. <sighs> People live oh, for my self-promotion. Surf News is brought to you by Hanson Surfboards. Hanson Surfboards, everything you need. And guess what? Hanson Surfboards does have sun bum. Oh, Todd, you're going to like this. Well, when are you going to Mexico? Uh, Dude. May. What's so sun bum doesn't just make sunblock and whatnot. This is an actual surf hat. Okay, can you wear that the rest of the podcast? Dude, podcasts? this is... Have you ever... Like, if you're going somewhere tropical and you don't have a surf hat... This, ser this seriously, yeah. Sunbum cares about protecting you. You can get all this Sunbum stuff out against some surfboards, of course, but check this out. Like, you're not going to get sunburned in this no, app. Not on your head. No. Everywhere else, you're going to have a sick chin strap tan. Yeah, so this is this is rad. Okay, so what do we got here? Oh, Bells, oh, oh yeah, what? But, but before we get into what well, happened. We can talk about what happened at Bells, but we can also talk about the... Do you want to start with the controversy? The breaking news. Okay, what's the breaking news from Bells? Uh, there was a big controversy at Bells. Um, it was apparently some of the worst judging ever, according to one well, person. Hold on. But wait! I'm what? blown away. I'm blown away about what you're about to say. Why? Go ahead. Keep, well... Keep saying. I would just like to, you know... I would like to give a big shout-out to um, Gabriel Medina... He penned a very heartfelt apology to the WSL. It just came out this morning. And to the judges, yeah. To the judges. He said he was very sorry for the way that he uh, spoke about them um, when he was up on the glass. It was, you know, 
he was very humble. Um, he apologetic. Apologetic, very complimentary yeah. of the person that beat him. And yeah, yeah. Well, April me, Fools. He's a dick. <sighs> you know, to me, the most surprising thing was that um, a surfer complained <laughs> about the judging, which. You know, again, I mean, I've never heard it before. I'm just kidding. I think that whole thing is insane. <laughs> so, again, here's my point. Here's my point with the judges, okay? I understand Gabriel's want for progression to be rewarded. We all want that. Yeah, but he laid down in the water. And, and, and you know what? It's like, I always lean on this, right? The judging panel... At the WSL, the ISA, you know, these big events, right? There's five experts mm -hmm. in their field. This is what they do for a living. They are experts. There's five of them, plus a head judge. So I, I, I get disagreeing, but how is your one opinion on yourself more valid than all I can say five is, experts. Yeah, okay, whatever. It's like I know, will always defend the judges. I'm just like, look, you look like a like a turd when you do that. Like I don't care if it's skating, surfing, or snowboarding. If you do a post heat interview and you just straight bitch about the judging like a little baby, like, like look, okay, I get it. Everyone is on either the receiving end or the other end of it, and it's like it's your job to go out there and fucking kick ass. Okay, and like don't leave it up to the judges. Sometimes the judges are going to go your way, and sometimes they're not going to go your way. It's a subjective thing. Look, the Olympics. Look, Ayuma just went and fucking got pissed, and we're like, "Fuck you guys!" But like, wait, so hold on. That that story just came out of nowhere, out of context. Give no, us not a, really. A quick run, not a really. quick brief if, precursor. Well, I'm just saying, like, like the, you know, the he's like, this is the worst judging ever. Well, I would disagree that uh, going for the gold medal in snowboarding and the judges basically forget to add a seven is probably... That was controversial. Probably controversial and maybe a little bit worse. And what did he, what did Ayumo say in his post-run interview? He didn't say shit. He what just, did he do? He just went up there and backed it up. There you go. I'm just saying. Like, it's like, don't... And it's... Look, you're not doing... You already have kind of a sussy reputation for being whiny well it's really hard because i get like i have this love for gabriel medina that that i started in a low place and i've told this story before i didn't i didn't care for him his surfing is amazing and then he, he kind of comes off as a douche yeah it's like he built up this this i go oh he's actually super cool and then it's like he goes up and up and then something like this happens and well maybe like, well, you know he's he making it hard for me he to probably be is super cool but sometimes he is. sometimes competition brings out the worst in people like, you know, it's like when you're not in the jersey and you're just chilling and having, you know, just talking shit. And I'm sure he's great. I'm sure he's, I've never, great. I've never hung out with him at all. I have, no, likable. I have no context, but I will say this is that sometimes like that's like competition brings out the absolute worst in humanity, well, especially it, like when it doesn't go your way and you're in the heat of emotion and you let that emotion come out and you, 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 bleh, in an interview. Well, like it's not going to do anything either. That's the whole thing. It's like, I understand the passion, the emotion, the complaint. I get it. But there's a better way to do it, right? And whatever. Like, I'm not on the championship tour. I don't know how it feels to lose like that. But at the same time, it's like, it, what, I, 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 I just don't see it as super blatant and super obvious. And I think Cole Hausman won that heat. If you don't know what we're talking about, Medina, Cole Hausman were heat together. Uh, at the end of the heat, Cole was winning, or Medina was in the lead. Cole got a wave. Mm -hmm. Medina thought that Cole was overscored. Do you think that Cole would have, like, if he was defeated by Medina, do you think he would have said that? No. No. It's no. just weird. Like, stop acting like you're fucking sitting on a cactus. Like, just take it on the chin, move on to the next one, and go. Yeah. And, and shut everyone up. And just win, just baby, just fucking win. Well, the waves were then. The waves were were not great. Well, the waves were like beating. The waves were not great <laughs> that day, uh, but overall, it's been a very entertaining contest. I, I've been enjoying it. The Bell semifinals, and and I, to me, the waves are kind of being overshadowed by the cool underdog stories that are developing. 
right? Um, get, who did I say was, was going to win this event? Who did you say was going to win this event? No, I, I, I want to hear it from I you. I don't remember. You don't remember? No. I said Medina was going to win, or John Dunn. Well, I will just, I'm just going to wait. I'm who did even, you say? I'm not even going to say it. Okay. I'm not even going to say it. I'm Why? just going to let... I said Ethan Ewing was going to win. You said Ethan Ewing's going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, he's out. I thought he was still in. <laughs> I thought he was still in. Good when did he? When did he get? When did he get knocked out? I didn't see yesterday. You want to know who's in the semis? Yeah. Okay. Good call though, Todd. Ethan Ewing's really who's, good. Wait, who's who's still in? I. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is an underdog. April Fools. I didn't say that. Who's yeah. still in? Okay, men's semifinals. This is pretty rad. Cole Hausman, Matthew McGillivray. Okay, I didn't say either of those guys. Two, I'm saying those are two underdogs. For them to get this far is epic. This is rad. This is a great story. Goofy versus Reg. These are two, like, you know, power surfers, blue collar rippers. This is going to be fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give. This could be happen. This is probably going to happen today, April 1st. I'm going to give Cole the edge. Um, his back end is gnarly. What about Griff against. Uh, Griff and Cole Pinto is the only non underdog. So the other semi is Griff versus Rio. Rio, total underdog, but he's been on fire his best year yet. In that one. Man, I love both those guys. I'm going to have to give the edge to Griffin. What are the weights supposed to be like? Um, I don't know. A, kind of a long, long, uh, medium, long, mushy right with some wind chop. Mm, I agree. Fun. I think Griff's got the advantage. Elite. Don't know. Mm. Uh, we'll see, actually. I'm not going to be one of those negative Nancys. I think the waves are going to be great. I'm going to watch every second of it. Uh, I'm going to say Griff's going to win that one. And it's going to be an all San Clemente 2% final with Cole Ashman versus Griffin Colapinto. And hopefully they do something fun like take off Switch on their first wave or something. That'll be good. Okay, women. Women, not much of an underdog story because these are all superstars. Oh, wait, I think this is a decent comment. Okay. This is you from... and... we, have, like, we have comments coming in also by text, so we know that people are actually yeah. listening. Read it out loud. Uh, this is from The Czech Republic. And he says, the sad part is Gabby fires his millions of followers up and creates tension, not only for the WSL, but for everyone involved. I agree. And make judging great again. <laughs> MJ, MJGA. Look, cry is free, okay? Fine. Oh my God. Did I have this? Do we have any more of those stickers? Yeah, somewhere. This office is a mess. Um, yeah, look. Five experts in a room with a head judge. They're talking about it. I'm not saying they're all perfect, but when five experts mm. disagree with one expert, I'm going with the five experts. Would you s stop the steal? Yes. Right. Storm the Storm tower. the judges' tower. Uh, the women's semis is pretty rad. Joanne DeFay versus Brisa Hennessy, Caroline Marks versus Caitlin Simmers. I mean, four amazing surfers. I'm saying Brisa Hennessy is the most improved surfer over the past three years. She is going off. Leaning into her heels, power surfing. That matchup is sick. Power v power. And Caroline Marks versus Caitlin Simmers. This is this is golden right here. You got the, the world champ going up against a future champ. I can't wait to see what happens. I gotta ask you a serious question. Okay, is this an not, April Fools? Nothing to do with surfing. Or April Fools. When you're in light of all of the weird Boeing shit with the oh, door, airplane question. doors like flying off. Yeah. Just shit happening. Okay. Okay. Do you feel more or less um, more or less co confident when you're sitting in a, near an exit row now? With the with the like, where do you like to sit? I didn't even think about it. There's nothing. It's, it's out. Once you get on a plane, it's out of your control. When they ask you, "Oh, are you gonna help?" Like, you're not helping. I I, I would. Do you ever? You wouldn't. I when would. you get on a plane, do you ever like? Look at who's in the exit row, and you are like, you're like, there's no way they're there's no fucking way that person is doing anything. Um, well, I feel like maybe that's a bad thing to like judge a person like that, but there's definitely been definitely been times where I've looked at who is sitting, who is <laughs> who's going to be directly responsible, who's saving your for life, opening that door, opening that fucking door, and they <laughs> do not look like they have a no. It's just not going to happen. Like if if I have to depend on this person. To open a door at a it's like a grocery store, I think we may be in danger. Nineteen-year-old influencer with oversized headphones, like staring into a phone and a plane, just like <laughs> crashed, and they're just like, "Oh my God, this guy is trying to climb over me and get out the door because the plane's on fire." Lol. <laughs> Lol. Um, Wings on fire. I will say. Lol. 
I will say we've all seen the videos and all the crap that flight attendants go through. And as a guy who um, is, lo is in love with somebody who used to be a flight attendant, I want to say please respect your flight attendants. Mm -hmm. Bring them candy, you know. Bring them chocolate. Chris has a secret. But, there's a secret code to this that Chris, you you recently told me about. Tell yeah. me, Tell everyone about the code. Oh, about um, bringing like the chocolate. If you bring chocolates or like a bag of Skittles, you know, gummy bears, give, if you give a small gift to the flight attendants, the staff on the plane, mm -hmm. when you get on, I'm not saying you're gonna get preferential treatment, but you're gonna make that person's job that's hard a little bit better. How soon do you think that um, there's, it's really nice there's gonna to be, there's gonna be a robot option, option to tip the flight attendant? How soon until the It'll be like robot 45, 35, 34%. I just think that once people exit their car and start walking towards the airport, 90% of humanity turns into total assholes. You, idiots. You wanted to say another word. Fuckers. <laughs> anyway, be nice to your flight attendants. I don't know how we got on this tangent. That's why it's an extra sports podcast about nothing. Uh, last week... We want to apologize. I got a really angry phone call really? from Kelly Slater. You know, he had just lost his heat with Dells, and everybody was telling him, hundreds of people were telling him, wow, the guys on the Monday Mass are naming your daughter, your new daughter. Shelly. Shelly Slater. And we were wrong. This is not an April Fool's joke. It's a boy. It's a boy? Yes. I think. What do you mean you think? I think I saw that on Instagram. Is there a blue boy? Now, do you have any uh, name recommendations for a boy Kelly Slater? Hmm. Just a kid. Do you have one? I, I just, still think Kelly is a great name. I Kelly Slater Jr. I think they should name the kid 12. Ooh. So, like, when he's calling the kid to come in for dinner, it just looks like he's calling, well, calling for that last... Uh, title that he didn't get. Well, 11 from Stranger Things, 11. Right. He's got 11 world titles. I think that's kind 12, of 12! 12, where are you? Oh, man. Is that gnarly? Anyway, Kelly. I'm sorry. That's as funny. Kelly, as a fan of this show, that's funny. we apologize. We got our information wrong. That shit's, we have no fact That checker. shit's funny. April Fool's. Okay. What, April. About what part? The, all of it. All right. Well, let's... We should start the podcast over. Okay, we're going to delete that whole first part. What else do you have? Oh, I went to a surf movie the other night. Yes, went, Oscar Langborn's movie. Yes, I went to his movie at Chris Christensen's, Chris Christensen's shop. Chris new shop. So the tell shop us about is Chris amazing. The movie review. I got there after the movie was over. Wow. I had some tacos. You're that guy. I had some tacos from Moon Age. It was good. You know, I had a couple people when Sunbender played on Saturday night. Like, what? Larry showed up at like ten thirty. What time are you guys playing? Mm -hmm. Bro, nine we played. We played with Drug Hunt and Atomic 99, and it was awesome. Yeah, I, I heard that it. Oolong Gallery. I could hear it from my house. Thanks for coming. I've seen Todd. you. I've seen you before. I listen to Sunbender all the time. You're actually one of the most supportive friends I have. Period. Yes. One of the most supportive friends I have. Uh, Zipper, featuring Chipper Wilson and Felipe Toledo, is coming to Encinitas Thursday, April 4th. La Paloma Theater. That's this Thursday. Uh, this is a Stab Premium member exclusive. So if you're not a Stab Premium member, you should be. Todd and I are. Wait a minute. You have to be a Stab Premium member to go to the... No, yeah. I think to get like an early RSV. Oh, got it. Um, I won't be here. Look, even though Stab doesn't necessarily care for me, I like them. Do you hear that a lot? That Stab doesn't necessarily care it's for you? It's more a feeling that I have. I like them. I love them. I love everything they do. I would just love to... Be part of it? I mean, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Okay. Do you have any other surf news? No. You know that um, I got a. I, I I'm working on a potential uh, surfboard model. This is not April Fool's. I'm working on a surfboard be? model with Dark Arts JT Justin Turnis. It's a board that we had this idea for. Justin made it, and it is so sick. Do you want to tell me like what the like what is it that makes it? So model? Justin. JT from Dark Arts, the inventor, innovator of that carbon technology, mm -hmm. and also an amazing designer, shaper as well. So he had a board, a really popular, famous board called the, the Dad Bod. Mm. Okay? Wide tail, 
wide nose, the little beaky on the nose, on the, you know, the top, the rocker, flat, perfect small wave board. So I said, let's take the 50% the, the up the nose of the dad bod, but use this tail that's more pulled in, like from a JT standard shortboard, okay. pulled in swallowtail. So now it's a dad bod on top, pulled in swallow on the bottom. And we're thinking like rad bod, surf machine. We've got a couple ideas. This is all proprietary secret information I shouldn't even be telling you guys about. The Kante. Oh yeah, you got a new sticker, huh? These, That's the, actually a great surfboard name. The Kante. These just came in. Oh, it, die cut stickers die went cut off. Die cut they, A surprise batch of listen to Chris Kante stickers. Yeah, that's a surprise. These are great. Um, so this is very cool. Our what homie. You, what do you think Terry, that? Uh, who's stickers. the one? Who's the guy that comments on Beach Grit and calls you Chris Kante? All right. the time? There's a couple of them. It's so. Good. I believe they're from Australia. Anyway, so. It's really funny. Perfect timing, Todd. That's a perfect transition to the mid-show ad block. Um, Diecutstickers.com and above and beyond. Look at these amazing Sunbender stickers right here. If you're here. using your ears, there are Sunbender stickers. Yeah, these are Sunbender stickers. We got a whole new batch of Listen to the Monday Math stickers. I'm gonna take some of those with me to. Oh the my thing. gosh, absolutely. I need to. Um, we got Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce at Try Bachan's. Um, oh, what did I? What have I been using? Oh, I, you know what I used it on? Today, they dropped their new miso honey barbecue sauce. For real? April Fools. April Fools. Anyway. It's the best Japanese barbecue sauce on the planet. And if you, it, every, everyone I know uses it. What about you? I, everyone I know uses it. They're too. number and, one. And if you're one of those uh, Japanese barbecue sauce uh, ripoff brands, you can just you can just go you fuck can rip, right off. You can rip off, rip yourself off. Bubs Naturals at Bubs Naturals. This is the best collagen on the planet. Uh, it's unflavored. You put it in your coffee. You put it in whatever. You mix it up. Boom! You've got your collagen intake for the day. Twenty grams of protein, seven essential amino acids. Meaning this is all good stuff that'll help you look better and live longer. Panic and coffee and tea. Todd, I think so. If you live in Encinitas. You'll notice there's a few hats. We're, we're like a very hat-centric town. Fish 101 most likely leads the hat game mm -hmm. here in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Second, which I see a lot now, is Captain Kino's. Do you agree? You've seen a lot of Captain Kino's? Captain Kino's hats are hat. So this is what I'm doing. This is like, You're gonna bring it. I don't wear many mesh hats, but this hat fits perfect. This is my new Panic and Coffee Tea hat. It's hard to find a good a good it's mesh. It's a good mesh. Hat. Hot. I think that's a good one. So, summer look. There you go. Panic and coffee and tea. At New Greens, Todd. At New Greens. Did you take your New Greens today? Every what time do you take it? In the morning or the afternoon? Single day. I wake up. Is that up. why you look like that? It is. Your face is so beautiful. But I think it's what on the inside. I, I It took you. me a long time to get into the so cycle of um, I wake up. I do my scoop of new greens. I put it in my new greens shaker because that's the only way and I shake can do it. it up. And I shake it and then I drink that before I have my coffee. Okay. And then I have coffee. Okay. Does this help with your bowel movements? Oh, it expedites. It does, huh? It's like Federal Express for my butthole. That's... I have somebody who has a gift for you. You do? In that vein. Are they here? No. Oh. Soon. Well, that's the end of July. A fan of your poo store. Okay, keep going. We got, I gotta go. I have to go to the airport in a half an hour. <laughs> we need to move this on. Pedal Electric at Pedal Electric. It's e-bike season. Uh, I'm ready for it. Are you ready for it? Yep. Get your go. pegs on there. You can bring a homie with you. Vesselshipping.com. Vessel.com. V-E-S-Y-L.com. At Mint Tours. Check out the tours happening now. Mount at, Bachelor is coming up. It's coming up at uh, Mint Tours. The 11th of April. So book it. I don't know if there's any spots left, but there might be, and it's gonna be fun. And uh, Bachan's Justin might go. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a, he's a big snowboard dude. He wants to go and experience snowboarding at Mount Bachelor. If you've never been to Mount Bachelor, this is a great time to go. Yeah, he is. All right, well, Skate News is brought to you by Opus Footwear at Opus Footwear. DIY independent footwear for your feet for skateboarding and walking around town. Did you happen to great. see the... Uh, I can't remember. It's a, is it a Nolly? I think it was a Nolly. we got to get a guest in on this. Okay, there was a Nolly flip to 
uh, front side ground. That Where? Like waist high oh, on a flat ground tray. Yeah, let's call up our uh, our guest. We'll All right, so um, Street League just happened. It looked like it happened like in a garage. It was in Vegas, right? I thought it was San Diego. You did? Well, if, if this, was guy, in, this guy. If it was in San Diego, then why didn't he call us? He's not even going to answer the phone. We were trying to call Paul Zitzer. He's a pro vert rider. Uh, announcer. Hello? Hello? Hello, Paul? Hello, Paul? <laughs> Obviously, he's uh, adept at screening his calls as well. Wow. Okay. Paul Zitzer, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Should we call Alex? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're just we just need to get to the bottom of, of what happened. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hi. All Hi. right. 2019 Skater of the Year, Paul Zitzer. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Nothing. I'm in Tampa getting ready for Tampa Pro. Oh, oh my God. gosh. This hey. is so great. You're on the Monday Mash. You're live. So don't say anything that will get you canceled because... We cannot get you uncanceled. We can't do that. April Fools. April Fools. Cancel yourself. Let's go. Um. Hey. Hey. Hey, Paul. Before yeah. before That's we get Todd Richards, by the way. Before we you know before him. we get into the heavy hitting questions, I'd like to ask you if you saw the nolly flip to front side grab like waist high that was on the uh, flat ground on the off of flat ground the other day. Yeah, it yeah, incredible. yeah. I like that. Who cares? <laughs> Give him credit. That was rad. It was me, Paul. Uh, we Todd and I were watching some street league this weekend. Can you give us a little quick hit? Where was Where it? Was it? it? It was. It looked like a like, kind of like a. Was it an old? I don't know. Old folks down? home. Uh, well, was it in the lobby of a of a Marriott? Apex. You guys are familiar with the Apex? Is, now, is Apex a grocery in, store? In, in Vegas. Okay. Okay. Apex stop. So this is like a qualifier for Super Crown for SLS? Yes. Okay. It, 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 it gets points for the skaters, but not as many points as a full arena stop because it's invite only, so they're trying to keep it keep it fair. So like this one was eight, eight men, six women. And then, so they'll they'll be on rotation. Then there's two more Apex stops in the same same spot coming up, and they'll invite eight different or eight and six different people. I told Todd all this this morning. He didn't believe me. Dude, well, he doesn't. It, nothing sinks in. He's just always like checking his gram and looking in the mirror. And yeah. Stuff, so yeah. Putting lotion on his. I'm face. like I'm like a bowling ball. Not no new ideas can penetrate me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Only three fingers. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's why we love you. That's why we love you. Uh, that's why we tolerate you. The only thing Todd's that can penetrate me is three Todd's fingers. Todd's nickname in high school is bowling ball because three fingers or less. Um, Paul, uh, so we do have an SLS. Sorry, that's not a good transition. We do have an SLS coming to San Diego, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. This, uh, it's April now already. So this month it's coming to San Diego. So Street League is preparing to hear from every single person that's ever been in the industry and i'm assuming you guys only called me so you could get free tickets well guess what it's your lucky day oh I'm oh there. awesome that's great thank you that's why we actually uh, were calling okay talk to you guys later hey uh, uh but I, let's well, talk tampa pro though yeah, this is, is there birch is there birch this year yes yes uh, this is huge first of all it's the 30th annual tampa pro yes so it's, this is big time i think they should bring the loop out again it's time for the loop again. Let our guests talk. Uh, but, but we're doing Bert. So no loop, but Bert. And we've got, like, it looks to be like every legit Bert skater in the world is signed up to skate. Except Todd. So, <laughs> yeah, he said legit. legit. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is there, so when is this and how can we watch? And why weren't we invited? Okay, Three questions. Question. YouTube, um, or just at the skateparkatampa.com main page. Click straight to it. 
We are not going live with Vert because that's Thursday and Friday of this week. But what we are going to do, because everybody's going to be asking, but we're going to film the entire finals, men's and women's Vert finals. We're going to edit it to the best angles, but show the uh, post the entire final so you can watch it on our YouTube. Sick. Uh, hopefully this weekend. It, so the, the finals is Friday night. We'll probably be posting it uh, Saturday if things go well. Awesome. So, All right. And. Who's going to get second? Because we know Jimmy Jimmy Wilkins is going to win. Who do we think is going to get second? I don't know if Jimmy is... Uh, Who, Tom Shar? Tom Shar. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to make any predictions. Uh, I, or Reed. Random, random bird dudes here that maybe no one's ever even heard of yet that are just like, wow, this dude could maybe win the contest. So I, I'm just stoked. I'm stoked Jimmy's coming. Tom Shar's coming. Trey, Trey Wood. Reed. Clay Kreiner. Reed's looking like he's... he's yeah, Reef is nerdy. Reef is yeah. fucking nerdy. I can't wait. Yep. Can't wait. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paul Zitzer. Look at that. We called. He, he yeah. screened us. He got his thoughts together. And then he called us back. The first... Hey, I appreciate it and all that mean stuff I said about Todd. That's all from the heart. And I, I mean it. So. All right. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. I agree with you on that. Thanks, Paul. Great job at Apex SLS this on. weekend. Camper Pro, tune in. We'll Don't hang there. up on a body jar. Oh, shit. Yeah. What? Did you just tell him not to hang up on a body jar? Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, um, what else do we have in skate news? That was cool. That's yeah. Good, good thinking. Paul's, Paul, see, Paul's a real pro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love P. Zitty. One Paul Zitzer is Ooh. almost better we than We shouldn't two. call him P. Zitty anymore. Why? Because of all the stuff. The zits? No, the, the P. Diddy. We talk P Diddy and nerd news. Yeah, I know nothing about for sure. it. Let's make I up, never let's make was. Up shit. I, I was at one P Diddy party, one party, and all of a sudden, like, I'm the next Jeffrey Epstein. Like, I was at one party. P. You Diddy. know, when we were at um, that footage we were should at, be deleted. When we were at Homesick last week. Speaking uh, yeah. of Jeffrey Epstein, go. What? Wait, have we done a podcast since Homesick? Yeah, three of them. Oh. We do not condone the actions of Jeffrey Epstein. By no. the way. Um. We want to know who killed him. When I was, in, I, I might have said this last week too. Yeah, you weird. definitely said this last week. But go ahead. When we were, an, when I was announcing, and Stan Levier, because Stan and I have this uh, love language of just like punching each other, basically yeah. verbally punching each other. Mm -hmm. and, and I happened to to say over the microphone, um, "F Stan's Island." <laughs> That's actually really funny. And uh, it, he was actually having an amateur event there, but. Um, <laughs> It was. Uh, uh, Would you I, like to apologize? On I apologize. Opinion? I apologize yeah. for saying that. Yeah, that is that is below the belt. Anyway, okay. Um, I know you gotta go. Sorry. Training. What did you say? Where was that? Epstein jokes are below the belt. Talk. <laughs> hey, we'll be here all day. We'll be here in twenty more minutes. Uh, yeah. So skate news. Uh, there is uh, one. There's a, a huge, devastating blow to skateboarding. This is really gnarly. Um. An amazing skater, a beloved skater, James Hardy, Bama do we, Hardy. Do we know what happened? No, it's I, I guess it's he passed away o over the weekend, and the outpouring of love and support for this incredible human and skater has just been, I mean, it's really sad. Dude's like mid twenties, mm -hmm. late twenties, and we don't know how it happened. It's not important right now. What's important is that people are really hurt. And sad, um, but you know, I think when when people there's no one like James Hardy. I mean, this dude was an absolute beast on a skateboard, and there's no easy part about losing someone that young and that talented. But I think you know one bright spot in this is like when your favorite musical artist or you know like a someone that has left a legacy behind is now we have. A lot to look back on to celebrate the life of James Hardy. Yeah, go out, go out and, His footage. Go out and skate a session and, yeah. and try to learn something new. Yeah, I mean, I, I would never ask anybody to go skate like him because he was so gnarly. Like, backlit, 20 stair, whatever. The dude is, he was an absolute hammer and it's really sad news. And sorry to all of his friends and family and fans. That, that's hard. So, uh, watch some of his footage, get hyped, go skate. I mean, that's, I think, the best thing you could do. Perfect. Um, Snow News is brought to you by Mammoth Mountain. Go to Mammoth Mountain. Get yourself some pow. Uh, my kids are going there this week, so we're going to get a... Next week, we'll get a pow report from Mammoth. 
from my kids. Uh, like we said, April 11th through the 15th is the Mint Tours trip to, what, where did you say? Mount Bachelor. Mount Bachelor. Yeah. So I, I don't know if there's room yet. You might have blown it. Wow. Hopefully you didn't. Go to Admin Tours on the gram. Maybe so, you did, maybe you didn't. Todd, Ken Block Day is at Woodward in at Copper, mm -hmm. uh, just no, outside no, no, of no, Park it's City. A, it's Woodward Park City. Copper is in Colorado. Copper is oh, where we were for Duty. I got a flight to Colorado. <laughs> that wouldn't even, that, that would not even shock me in the Where's least. Copper? Copper? <laughs> we were just there. <laughs> so, Where's Sasa Because that's what I put my tickets for. It's in uh, Mexico. No, this is pretty awesome. So, Ken Block Day, 4 3. Yep, we're doing this thing. It's on Wednesday um, during the day. And you're going to ride. I'm, I'm riding tomorrow and, and Wednesday. I can't wait. Oh, it must be it's nice. It's supposed to be really fun. To be Todd Richards. <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to go, and there's a bunch of, um, as I said previously in the podcast, we're just joining up and talked about this in the top of it, was that they're going to they're doing a whole bunch of different obstacles that are throwbacks to the Mountain Lab. And there's like a Mountain Lab like revisit obstacle session that's going to go down on Wednesday. So, so like can, the can't, the missile, what was, what were yeah, some like of those? Yeah, there's a missile, things. there was like, the, the, the missile was probably one of the most iconic features that was at the Mount Lab. Yeah. So that's going to be there. And then there's a couple other things, a couple boxes, a couple rails that have inspiration from the Mountain Lab. We're going to have a bunch of people that were part of the Mountain Lab are going to be there. And not just like riders like myself and Eddie Wall. Um, I went to the Mountain Lab. We've been, we're going to have other people that were part of the Mountain Lab story. Story. So it's going to be cool, and you're going to be able to see. I don't know. There's, there's just some, there's just some funny stuff that's going to happen, and we're going to ride all that morning. It's supposed to be 50 degrees out, and then you're going to uh, ride shirtless, right? I will have a shirt on. On your head, though, like my head, yeah, head. like tied around my head. Yeah, that's sick. But then we're going to go inside later on that evening, and we're going to do a live auction, and there's going to be some interviews with with people that um, Ken is inspired to go on to greatness, and these are. These are really big names, and there's the biggest crazy musical acts, and it's a it's a big fucking deal. Like this thing is going to be really cool, and I think I've been kind of like just pushing it to the back of my head because I have a huge uh, a role. Chris and I are. I'm have, here to support you. Chris and I have a, meeting, be there we are we are hosting the evening's festivities, and I'm starting to get really fucking nervous, and I don't really ever get what are you wearing all that stuff. I don't really have anything. I'm just wearing this. Or like, like a suit? No, I'm wearing this. I don't have any. What should I wear? Oh, we're matching. Just, that's right. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then uh, let's talk about what happens after uh, KB Day, which is on Wednesday. So Wednesday being uh, the third, the fourth is when the natural selection finals that we just recorded last Thursday in Los Angeles. This Hell is the yeah. finals. Who this won? Is, this is, I can't tell you. You got to tune in. This Almost is going to be on Red Bull TV. And it's going to be awesome. Myself, Mary Walsh, and Ed Lee sat down and banged it out. And I can tell you that there is some crazy shit in the terrain that they rode on that second finals day. is insane. So definitely tune into that. And then... Crazy and insane. And then moving on to the weekend. We have two things coming up next weekend, which is if you're in Salt Lake City already for KB Day, you can stick around. And the Bomb Hole Cup is coming at you Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, there's a Bomb Hole Bank Slalom. Should we call Chris? Call Grandis? He won't answer, dude. He, he's the uh, fucking Captain Screener. You can try. Captain Screener. Anyway, but he will be uh, hosting the uh, Bank Slalom on Saturday. And on Sunday, it will be the Bomb Hole Cup Park Showdown with events such as Mandatory Cab Nines and chuck yourself uh, onto a rail with reckless abandon. I think that the event should be called Chuck Yourself Before You Fuck Yourself. <laughs> chuck Yourself Before You Fuck Yourself. Explicit lyrics. Warning. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a crazy weekend, and then I'm going to need a fucking nap. And also, if you don't happen to be in Utah, you can go to um, Boreal, which is... A I had to have a Boreal Lance. You <laughs> your Boreal Lance? Um, Chris Roach is having a uh, mini pipe Fandango next Saturday, and that'll be going down to Boreal, and um, Otterstrom will be there, and a whole bunch of other people. So there's, a lot, there's a lot going on, and then yeah, after yeah. that is the Uninvited that's happening at Woodward Park City. Like, there's just so you much are giving shit. Me, yeah, you, you uh, are giving me some great ideas for snowboarding events to watch and cheer for 
and maybe drive to if I'm close to one. I I, I think that literally every go. event that you go to is the uninvited. Because I'm always uninvited. Right. Anyway. Uh, what about uh, do you have any personal snow news? Not really. Really? I mean, maybe, but I don't want to. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Not on April first. Not on April first. No. Um. So that's. I mean, look. I got to catch a flight now and. Oh, in 15 minutes. Okay, so, well, let's get to some questions. Okay, we're going to do questions. We Should got, we go to Nerd News? Let's go to Nerd News. Nerd News, what the fuck is up with P. Diddy? What's going on? Um, what, are your, what are your theories? I mean, there's a lot of people saying that he uh, he may be having some inappropriate um, touching. So, there's a couple of different theories, right? This is a, th- There's a couple of different theories that I've heard. One of them is he's a creep, and he's having these giant parties... Getting everybody loaded. There's underage people there getting loaded. Uh, there's like sex escapades happening, and there's cameras everywhere. So he's capturing okay, all this stuff. Say, hold on. Wait, at what point? Like, and I, I've asked this question before. Maybe not to you, but to other people. Like, at what point? Like, at what stage in wealth do you just become weird. fucking creepy and weird? Like, is there like a dollar amount? I think it's like a billion dollars. Like a billion dollars, and you just you're like. Once you become a billionaire, you're just. You get weird. Really? Like, or maybe it's the drive so to... What does that person say? Nice. Oh, John Beter. John Beter says, Mike Tyson didn't like him touching his leg. He moved his hand and then moved away on the couch. Interesting. Huh. So, uh, I, so again, from what I gather, ton of celebrities and powerful people in Hollywood at these P. Diddy parties. He's filming everything. People were doing inappropriate stuff. Look, if there's underage things happening there, lock him up. Forever. Is this one of those adrenochrome, or, adrenochrome parties? Or get this. What? This is another. This is like a Rogan style. Is this a black? Is um, this a Bermuda Triangle? Black Mirror type of thing. Black Mirror. So, in fact, there, there's no facts here. We don't know shit. In in theory, P Diddy was doing this stuff, filming everybody. There were some elite, famous, powerful people that were filmed. Doing inappropriate acts with underage people, men, women, children, the whole deal. And the government got wind of it and went in to take and delete all the footage and tapes of famous people and politicians doing this underage stuff. So it was like a double cross. Hmm. Again, I don't know. So I shouldn't even be talking. You know, all this shit, like, like, it's just funny because not very long ago, I would have been like, Wow, that is just some crazy ass shit. But now I'm just like, probably. Like I'm, I'm at this point in my life, and I never thought I would reach the point where like people tell me shit and that's just so fucking outlandish. And I'm like, probably. Wow, probably could happen. Gnarly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's the nerdiest news we got. If in fact P Diddy did these things, the P is gonna now stand for Prison Diddy. Oh my god. You can use that one, Fox News. Uh, okay, we got a bunch of questions and comments. Okay, let's go. John Beter says, Whistler Blackcomb is looking for an action sports podcast sponsor. The chosen sponsor gets a custom-wrapped Creekside gondola cabin. <laughs> I love it. John, uh, Don't uh, tell them what that last sticker was for. Someone, and put it up there. someone did something, and, and that somehow we are involved. It was something to do with explosive diarrhea. Anyway. Devin Curran, what up, Devin? Arizona snow report. Snow Bowl received over 100 inches in March. Come out to Arizona and play. Is Arizona an underrated snowboarding destination? I think anything east of California, like in between here and Utah, is underrated. Like there's this, like there's Bryant Head, there's Snow Bowl in Arizona. I've been to Bryant Head. There's Lee Canyon. Like all these little resorts that if they get snow come these like storm systems like we had yesterday roll in and then go east from here and it's cold dude it's so fucking good there. that's so rad and it's just novelty too yeah i love it uh matt allen says todd mm. what would be the outcome if an average to below average rider like myself uh were forced to ride a line on a legitimate alaskan face People is this it. akin to olympic sending surfers from developing surfing nations like ukraine to chopo i think that if it's if if the snow is stable and you are given instructions on how to manage slough. Which like is how like, steep is it? It's pretty fucking steep, dude. But it's like one of those things that's more nerve-wracking when you drop in. And then once you make your first turn, it's okay. But you need to... It's 
you need to manage the snow that's coming down the face next to you. That's why you see them always on top of the spines because the snow can fall off on either side. I didn't know that. Yeah, because it's like ball bearings and it gets underneath you and then you do an aggressive um, 700 tomahawks down Scary. the chute. Uh, that's a great question. And, and and to address the Olympics sending surfers from developing surf nations, well, you got to qualify and it's a pretty rigorous qualification thing to get to the Olympics at Chihopal. So you're not going to see somebody who's just like starting their competitive journey in surfing sent out at 20 foot chump. Thank God. Um, ooh, Adam at Sart. What's up, Adam? Yes, Adam, I will be sending you a sticker pack. You're the best. I got you. Um, what three skaters would you pick to combine to make one super skater? Damn. Wow. Okay. You want me to start? Yeah. Cardiel. Okay. Style. Mm -hmm. And progression. Grant Taylor. Uh, stole my, stole my Grant And Jimmy Wilkins. I'm going to go Alan Peterson. Alan Peterson. Um, I mean, maybe you put Tony Hawk in there, too, just so he could do every single trick. Alan Peterson, Chris Miller, and um, what's the dude with, uh, from A Wonderful, Horrible Life? Um, PJ Ladd? PJ Ladd. Okay. Good picks, Todd. That's pretty good Look picks, at you. right? That's very good. I fucking, Alan Peterson's so fucking He's good. He's so dude. good. Oh, my God. I miss Alan Peterson. You brought that Backside right? Ollie's, like, face hot. That was awesome. Uh, what else we got? Uh, you have four minutes. Uh, let me see. Um, Laura Laura Stencil wants to know, what's up with Britney Spears' Instagram account? I don't know. Dude. What's up with her Instagram account? Nothing. It was, she's dancing with knives and oh, bikini yeah. and stuff. She's just, she's just a performance artist. It was. You know, um, I think she's just a performance artist. I mean, was me to ask you this, and someone kind of asked me last week after the show was over. What's what was your favorite? Like when you first got into skating, Christina like, Aguilera. No, what was your favorite skateboard? Oh. Like, of when you were little, like not now, but like the one that like kind of did it for you. Like and it, like a real skateboard, not like a Nash. Oh, um, well, I mean, going into McGill's Skate Shop when I was a. 10. Do you remember your first board? Yeah. My yeah. first, like, full setup board from McGill's was a McGill Mini. Um, I want to say Tracker Trucks, probably Ratbones Wheels, Rails. Mm -hmm. um, everything, like the rail. Everything. Right? Tail Guard, maybe even Jawbone. Uh, the McGill Skull Snake was, I mean. Bonite? No, not Bonet. We couldn't afford Bonet. But it was a mini. Um, and then after that, my probably most memorable board was the Dune Sitting Baby graphic. When I was a little bit older, oh, yeah. more of a like my own kind of concept of what I wanted. The Dune, it was yellow with the Dune Sitting Baby graphic. I it just a, said Dune. I had a Zorlac double cut. Ooh. And it had the pus head, shrunken head with the bones yeah. in it. Yeah. That's God, a good one. Board was so good. Shout out Mike Crum. Mike Crum put a happy face on my oh my son, fifteen year old son starting driving lessons with his dad. In oh the shit! Yeah. Big shout out Mike Crum. I saw there's some footage of Mike Crum ripping uh, the Tampa ramp the other day. Mike is, dude. He's got some of the best freaking oh style of so all good. time. He's, and he's just an awesome person too. Uh, DJ says. DJ says. Um, hey, Chris and Todd. Share your best wedding story. Keep it in mind that some of the best stories come from complete pandemonium. I only go to second weddings now. Best wedding story. I will not spend money on your first wedding. Oh, right. I just won't. Okay. It's just it's a waste of money. Yeah. So okay. you should tell everyone it's your second wedding. Right. So that then they can commit to it. Um, your first wedding should just be like like a live stream. I actually ran into this the the, the my my friend Chris. I DJ'd his wedding and, 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 and emceed it. And throughout the wedding, I was very professional. It was a huge Greek wedding. Literally Greek, huge. Did they do the thing where they throw the money in? In Palm Springs, oh, all the stuff. But by the end of the wedding, I had, this is back when I was drinking, and I got a little excited and I ended up making some announcements about anal sex, um, but virginity and tonight's the night and the father of the groom actually had to pull the microphone out of my hand. I was the hired announcer. 
big, you big fat. I was blacked out. Big it was fat bad. Greek wedding. So that was pretty funny. Um, Your big, yeah. big puffy swollen wedding. Yes. Uh, we got a question from Ginger Slaughter. Ginger Slaughter says, "What are common surf injuries and how to avoid them? Common surf injuries: ankles, knees." You know, um, mostly I think rolled ankles, tweaked ankles from landing airs or trying moves. Or doing flats. surprise splits. Surprise splits is horrible. And, and uncommon surf injuries happen in places like Pipeline, Chilfo, you know, like big wave spots that uh, only... Dude, I be... swear to God, I've gotten hurt worse on like a knee-high day. Oh, no. The worst, the only time I've ever been injured surfing is on waist high and below. Mm -hmm. It's just... I don't know, it's kind of like the mini ramp thing, right? You're always landing in the flats. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, rolled ankles, I think, is probably the most common. How so the takeaway here Stretch. is to go uh, surf only giant waves. Yeah, just, just big waves. Old Nerdy Bastard says, Thoughts on younger snowboarders dictating what 40 or 50-year-old snowboarders should ride like? And there's a picture of what? Of somebody's Instagram, and it's like, this is what. This is what older snowboarders should ride like. And it's like a oh, guy it's like carving down a mountain. Really? Yeah. Maybe it's because now those people can actually hold a fucking edge properly. Oh. Shots. Fired. Rob Reed says, what are your thoughts on Gabriel Medina interview after his loss to Cole Hausman and Bells? Did the judges get it wrong? Or is this another case of cry is free? It is another case of cry is free. And yes. I understand that Gabriel Medina wants to be in the final five, wants to be a world champion. He can do it. And if he complains about it all the way, well... You know how you spell wants? Wants. That's W-A-A-A-H-H-H-N-T. Stop crying. Matt Allen says, This is for Cote. Rank yourself against fellow WSL commentators in these following areas. Surfing ability, looks, amount of negative comments received. Surfing ability, what's, where do you rank it? Uh, well... I mean, it depends, right? In small waves, I rank myself near or close to the top. In waves head high and over, I'm going to go ahead and give the edge over to Pete Mel and Strider. Um, you know, I think in a heat, let's say in Huntington Beach, if it was myself, Mitchell Salazar, Turpel, Ronnie Blakey, Kaipo, Strider. Where are you? Where are you at? Top two. In like two to three foot HV. I'm going top two. Mm -hmm. uh, in looks, again, I'm going to put myself probably in the top ten of surf commentators, the looks department. Um, Joe is a handsome, beautiful man. I mean, Strider is like uh, a foxy dad, hot dad, total dill. Mitch Salazar, I mean, he is a teddy bear, so cute. <laughs> Ronnie Blakey, come on. C Ronnie Blakey's like one of those handsome dudes. C. In the world. Grove says Michelle Salad Bar. Oh, okay. Do you ever call him that? No. Um, Pretty good. Uh, who I, else I, I probably would have gone, I would have gone is straight for Michelle Salad handsome. Bar. Uh, yeah, I'm not the best looking announcer. Chris, it's 11 o'clock. I have to go. Todd, I watched the. This is from uh, Rajuda. Okay, Rejuvenata. I have to go. Right after this. Todd, I watched the replay of the 2003 X Games this weekend. You really honed your announcing skills since then. Do you realize for C Games announcing would take you? And now, watching Marco come up short in the transfer gap backside when 80 dudes a beast, early 2000s X Games was the best. I shit my pants four times at work today. Well, congratulations on shitting your pants four times at work. I think, you know, it's always good to strive for excellence. And Try to strive for great. Yeah, in 2003, that was my first announcing gig. It's because I got hurt. And they just put me in the booth. And yeah, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just making shit up on the, on the fly. Oh, all right. All right, well, I gotta go. go. I'm going to the airport. Great pod. We'll see you guys later. Wheels up. And Welcome uh, to the pod, Sunbomb. Stoked. Welcome to the pod, Sunbomb. We'll see you guys next week. Much more Yo. action. That was a great one. Lots of...